Hi, everybody. This video is going to be about um, determining arguments from non-arguments, section 1.2. So let's just jump right in. Number one, and you might see my little cheat notes written out to the side. That's fine. I'm going to give you answers anyway, but with explanation. So, and speaking of explanations, number one, the turkey vulture is called by that name because its red featherless head resembles the head of a wild turkey. Um, wild turkey, by the way, one of my uncle's favorite drinks. Um, <clears throat> okay, is this an argument? It is not. And that is because it's an explanation. So uh, the turkey vulture is in fact named that because of this. Um, so remember whenever it's like a factual claim or kind of an indisputable claim, it's more of just an explanation um, than an argument. Number two, if public education fails to improve the quality of instruction in both primary and secondary schools, then it is likely that it will lose additional students to the private sector in the years to come or the years ahead. Now, while this might be a good premise or a conclusion for an argument, remember that a single conditional statement is not an argument. Uh, an if then statement, a conditional statement is not an argument by itself. Two conditional statements could be an argument. Uh, Two or more conditional statements could be arguments. Um, for example, uh, hypothetical syllogism is three conditional statements, two of those being premises, one a conclusion. But a single conditional statement like this, an if-then statement, is not an argument. So this is a non-argument, although it could be a premise or a conclusion to an argument. Number three. Freedom of the press is the most important of our constitutionally guaranteed freedoms. Without it, our other freedoms would be immediately threatened. Furthermore, it provides the fulcrum for the advancement of new freedoms. This is an argument. And remember, in this section, you are supposed to identify the conclusions of them, of these examples, if they are arguments. You can see that little C that I have marked there. Um, the first sentence here is the conclusion. Freedom of the press is the most important of our constitutionally guaranteed freedoms. That's my conclusion. Why? Because why? Well, number one premise, without it, our other freedoms would be immediately threatened. And premise number two, furthermore, it provides the fulcrum for the advancement of new freedoms. Because of those two things, the conclusion is that it's our most important guaranteed constitutional freedom. Number four. A mammal is a vertebrate animal that nurses its offspring. Thus, cats and dogs are mammals, as are sheep, monkey, rabbits, monkeys, rabbits, and bears, and humans, and echidna, and caribou. Um, if you haven't heard the song Mammal by They Might Be Giants, or Mammals, check it out. It's a great song. It's about mammals. Um, this is not an argument. It's an illustration. And here, the illustration piece is the listing of the types of things that are mammals. So a cat is an illustration of a mammal, dog. Um, when you list things off, you're illustrating what a mammal is. And notice that the first sentence is kind of a, a simple definition, although there are some other aspects of being mammalian. For example, mammals have um, some type of hair or fur. Even dolphins and whales, by the way, um, they have like these little whiskers, I think. Uh, so they actually do have hair. Um, but anyway, uh, but that's, that's a definition too at the beginning. So if you just had a mammal as a vertebrate animal that nurses its offspring, that also wouldn't be an argument. Most people wouldn't deny that. Again, it's one of those factual claims, doesn't need to be disputed. Remember, arguments are things that we usually could present multiple positions on, um, multiple rational positions. You can always present another position. You can claim that two plus two does not equal four, um, but we're working within the realm here uh, where we would accept those types of truths to be self-evident. 
or um, things that we can really argue about. Number five, it's strongly recommended that you have your house inspected for termite damage at the earliest possible opportunity. Um, this is not an argument. This is a piece of advice. We recommend that you do this. We recommend that you do that. You should do this or that um, is not an argument, piece of advice. Okay. And number six, All right, number six, uh, mosquito bites are not always the harmless little irritations most of us take them to be. For example, some mosquitoes carry West Nile virus and people who are infected can become very sick or even die. This is an argument. Uh, the, the conclusion here is that mosquito bites are not always harmless little irritations. And the reasoning presented, the premises are that some mosquitoes carry West Nile virus and people who are infected can become very sick or even die. Those two premises work together actually and we'll be mapping arguments later. We would add them together with a little plus sign and then they go work together to support the conclusion here. All right, we'll do one more. I'll probably do some more of these in the future, get to some of the more difficult ones. Um, if stem cell research is restricted, then future cures will, cures will not materialize. If future cures do not materialize, then people will die prematurely. Therefore, if stem cell research is restricted, then people will die prematurely. This is an argument. Remember, I went back to going back. This is not an argument by itself. Number two, it's a conditional statement. You'll notice that this is a series of three conditional statements. Remember, therefore is our conclusion indicator. So our conclusion is the, the last sentence here. And this is actually an, uh, a valid argument form called hypothetical syllogism. You'll see this a lot uh, in this class and in general in logic. And it's a good form to use. It's a valid form. And that's, those are the forms that we want to use when we're working in the realm um, of deductive argumentation. And so if, uh, if the premises are true in this argument, then the conclusion of necessity must be true. This is an argument. And uh, the final sentence is the conclusion. So I hope you found that helpful. I will probably create a few more of these videos and do some more practice problems. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me.